Okay, so recently I've noticed a little bit of confusion in the photography community about the different names for Lightroom. So I thought in this video, I'd clear it up once and for all and for everyone. And then also show you how no matter what platform you use, be it Lightroom Classic or Lightroom, you can still have access to all of the newest and latest features. All right, so first off, we have Lightroom Classic. This is the original software that was released almost 20 years ago, and back in the day was called Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, or commonly just Lightroom. This is the version that uses catalogs and deals with files that are stored on hard drives. Then in October 2017, Adobe released a different version, which originally only dealt with images that were on the cloud. This new version was named Lightroom CC, and simultaneously, the original Adobe Photoshop Lightroom became Lightroom Classic CC. Now, obviously, this caused a little bit of confusion, so to help with that, Adobe dropped the CC part, so then we ended up with Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. And that's where we are today. Now, back in the day, and confusingly still today, some people refer to the newer version as Lightroom Cloud, when in fact that is no longer the case, because back in October 2023, with the release of version 7, local storage was added, allowing users to browse and edit photos stored on their hard drives without uploading them to Adobe's cloud servers. So, we have Lightroom Classic, and we have Lightroom. But what about Lightroom Desktop, Lightroom Mobile, and Lightroom Web? Well, this is where the confusion can occur again, but entirely with the best intentions, because those aren't actually names. They're ways that you can use Lightroom. So really, it's Lightroom on the desktop, Lightroom on mobile, and Lightroom on the web. It just helps to differentiate where someone is referring to when they use Lightroom. And this is important because let's say I produced a new course on using Lightroom and you, for no fault of your own, assumed this meant it would be the version that you would use on your desktop or laptop. But when you started watching the course, I start going through using Lightroom on my mobile device. Understandably, you'd be confused and maybe a tad annoyed. Now, of course, all of this could have been handled differently by Adobe, but hey, we know that and they know that. And I'm sure if they had a time machine, they would do it differently. But as we are today, we have Lightroom Classic, the legacy desktop only version. And we have Lightroom, the version where we can edit, organize and share photos on desktop, mobile and web, which again is just called Lightroom. And when we hear desktop, mobile, and web, that is only referring to where Lightroom is being used. So there's Lightroom Classic and there's Lightroom. Okay, so now let me show you how no matter what you use, be it Lightroom Classic or Lightroom, how you don't have to miss out on all the new features that appear only in one particular version. I'm going to show you something in Lightroom Classic, but first of all, I'll start in Lightroom, which is where I am now, Lightroom on my desktop. I have this image open, which if we look in the top left corner, shows that it's in local storage, so on my hard drive, not on the cloud. You can see that it's on a hard drive and in a folder called Teaching. Now, something that Lightroom has that Lightroom Classic doesn't is recommended presets, which we find in the presets section. There's also the premium presets that are in every version of Lightroom, and obviously any that you've saved. But to access these recommended presets, you can see here I get a message telling me that recommended presets are disabled for local images, meaning I need to go onto the Adobe servers to get them, and this I can do temporarily. The reason I have to go online is because these are presets that the Lightroom community make available and new ones are added every single day. There are literally thousands. So if I want to make use of them, I need to go to the top right here and choose copy one photo to cloud. I click on that and this message pops up telling me that the image and any edits will be added to the cloud. So I click okay, and then I can click to view in the cloud. 
When I click on that, you can see now in the top left hand corner that the image is indeed now on the cloud. So I go to the recommended presets and here they are. So let's just quickly apply one so we have some editing done to this image. Now, let's say that I've done what I want to do and now want my image off the cloud because I only really want to store images locally. Well, all I do is right click on the image or go to the edit menu and choose archive one photo locally. I choose where I want the file. I can browse or choose one of the five most recent destinations. I can choose to keep the original or replace it. But I'll create a folder by going to Browse, then the hard drive, and I'll create a new folder called Edit. and then click Archive. This takes the image off the cloud along with the edits and puts it where I said to on my local storage. So now look, if I go to the Local tab, here it is. If I go to the Finder, you can see here, look, there's the file and the accompanying XMP file holding all of the edits. Now though, if we look at Lightroom on the web, we can see there is a feature here called Quick Actions. And this, at the moment, is only in Lightroom on the web and Lightroom on mobile. And these are incredibly powerful. Now, me being a Lightroom user, if I wanted to use these, all I would need to do is to sync an image to the cloud. That image appears in Lightroom as recently added. If I go to Lightroom on the web, it syncs there too in the added photo section. So then I can use the quick actions, which instantly analyzes my image and then gives me these presets. This one looks really cool, but it also gives me sliders I can use to emphasize or de-emphasize areas in the image. It also creates the masks, which we can see here. So you could edit further. And all of this will sync back to my Lightroom on the desktop. And I could then choose to keep this image in the cloud or archive it locally back onto my hard drive. But what about Lightroom Classic? Well, you can access everything too. All you need to do is to create a collection and have it sync with Lightroom. Then you too can go to lightroom.adobe.com to go to Lightroom on the web. The collection you made appears as an album, and then you can access everything. Recommended presets, versions, and of course, the quick actions. Any edits you make here will sync back to the collection you made in Lightroom Classic, which you could then turn off the sync with Lightroom so your image is only on your hard drive and no longer syncing with Lightroom. So there you go, the Lightroom and Lightroom Classic naming, and also how no matter what platform you use, you can access all the latest features. Now don't forget, if you love photography and editing your images, check out the free photography community on School. The link is here and in the description. Right, that's me. I'll catch you in the next video.